Nice entrance, solid 8 out of 10. Here's your look at the Diamond Select, this is the Gamerverse Spider-Man Collector's Action Figure with Accessories. When teenaged Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider, he gained the proportional speed, strength and agility of an arachnid. After learning that with great power there must also come great responsibility, he became the crime-fighting superhero called the Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man has now been web-swinging through the streets of New York City for eight years and over that time has become more experienced and masterful at fighting crime in the Big Apple. But his talents go beyond breathtaking acrobatics and his trademark wall crawling. Spider-Man uses his intellect to craft amazing gadgets to help get the job done. This latest adventure calls for Spider-Man to use everything at his disposal and he'll face more powerful and personal adversaries than ever before. Before we get swinging into this review, the very first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Spider-Man stands from the video game. I'd also like to send out a thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select who made this review possible. Those in the market to pick up this one for themselves, you'll be happy to know that The Amazing Spider-Man from the video game is available right now through various online stores. As many comic book stores are currently still closed due to everything that's happening on in the world right now. Get a gander at this, Spiderlings, you're looking at the figure standing 6.9 inches in height. In centimeters, that works out to be, did I really overpronounce centimeters? I think I did. 17.7 centimeters, in fact, is the Spider-Man from the video game. Let's have a look at the accessories that come included with Spider-Man. The first thing is the notable Spider Drone, which is very nicely painted here in a cranberry metallic red. You can see that the webbing has been very cleanly applied, so much so for the fact that also you can see that the eyes, all four of them at least, have been outlined in silver. That is a very small detail to capture and paint successfully. As you can see, there's no real issues with paint whatsoever on this little tiny drone. It doesn't have any articulation to speak of. In fact, all the legs, all eight of them at least, four on both sides, are just soft plastic. So while you can move them up and down, you're only really moving the flexible plastic. You're not moving anything that's articulated on it. Other things that come included with the figure, try not to drop this, try not to drop this, try not to drop this. I think I'm probably just jinxing myself by saying that. He comes included with his little tiny Spider-Man phone. I don't think you have to put Spidey in front of everything, but he does come included with his little tiny phone that can be held inside his hand. Let me show you what's going on with his hand. He does come included with this hand, for example. So if he wants to reach out and touch somebody... There you go. You can actually wedge the phone in between the thumb and the four fingers to pull off Spider-Man holding his phone in his hand. It also helps very much too if he wants to be socially tweeting all his exploits. I wonder if Spider-Man does have his own Twitter account. That would be interesting. Fighting crime right now, stopping to get hashtag Subway. Anyways, nonetheless, he does come with his little included phone. As I said, fits quite easily into his thumb and his fingers. You could even do the blizzard test. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. We'll talk about the other hands also in a second. Spider-Man also comes included with some webbing. The webbing itself is pegged on the back. Now, I thought for a second there was going to be a section on Spider-Man that also allowed you to peg this in place. And it really isn't. Spider-Man could, yes, wear it as a webbing poncho, but I don't think the intended purpose is that. You could fit it, of course, over top of bad guys if you wanted to, but it doesn't really quite fit over top of that either. Or if you also wanted to have a little bit of fun, after all, if it is raining and all and someone wants to protect his little spidey drone, you could have a little Spider-Man web house for him. A little dog house that you can whistle him over from time to time, feed him his niblets before he's ready to go out and fight crime. So it does come, like I said, included with the Will Webbed Dome. I like the fact that you do get something like this. Again, it's just something fun. It doesn't always have to be straight lines of webbing. And this one is just made of a soft plastic. As you can see, it doesn't look like as much it's been painted, maybe just slightly dusted. 
It's just, like I said, translucent plastic with, like I said, those little pegs on the sides. Then Spider-Man comes with a series of interchangeable hands. I also want to just stress the fact that his hands in his sockets are closed fists. So yes, you can count those. But he does also have all the basically calling cards of Spidey. For example, web shooting hands. You can't have a Spider-Man without web shooting hands. And thank goodness this figure does include those. Nice detailing done on the little webbing itself. The panel lines, even when you really think about just the hands themselves. The fact that they can hit all of those marks capture all of those there is yes a little bit of paint in the corner that's going to happen from time to time but the webbing is generally kept pretty clean on something as small as hands he does also have web crawling hands i also like to consider these gestured hands jazz hands as well but they're really suited for like if you want to have him look like he's crawling up the walls and again really nice fine details added to those and then he also has just again another holding hand this specific hand i guess in some sense you could have attached to this peg the peg could just run through the hand like so i guess it also serves a bit like a web shield if you want to pretend like spider-man has a web shield that's kind of clever the way that they've done that as well so like those are basically all the hands and yes we did also already talk about the cell phone holding hand we have to also include that in the mix as well and those are all the accessories that come included with the figure picking up the figure itself a nice rendition of spidey from the video game which i'm more and more warming up to this design of costume originally mm, not so much but i think over the time of getting this one and originally having the hot toys in my collection uh, like i said i've really warmed up to this design one thing I did notice, though, about the design, if I compare one to the other and comparing it to the Hot Toys, is that the costume here is a lighter blue. The game itself, I feel like the costume is just slightly one shade darker than perhaps the blues represented here as well. Uh, one thing I like is that the webbing, for example, not only just the webbing here, but the logo here, I should say, has also been raised. This isn't just painted in place. The white hits all its marks, falls within the lines and the boundaries that's required of it to do. And even on the front, the paint is very, really quite clean, actually, on the webbing. Uh, okay, so let's just talk about, like, the cobweb painting that they've added to the surface of his costume. If I look from head to toe, and I guess we could both start with the head sculpt here, which is a good head sculpt for Spidey. I did notice a little bit of, like, shading happening right underneath his eye wonder if that is intentional or unintentional. That would be the opposite of intentional. I like also that he does have the sections of his eyes that, of course, would expand and contract, close and open. I guess are those shutter eyes, shutter eyes on Spidey. But the, like, like I said, the webbing is really quite clean on this. If we get a little bit further down, I mean, it, it's hard pressed to try to keep and continue the trend of having the clean webbing. And for the most part, on my particular figure, again, just showing you guys here, webbing, for the most part, falls within those lines. A few little areas, like for the elbows, for example, that get missed, unfortunately. Some get omitted and not invited to the party. But for the most part, like I said, the webbing is kept pretty clean. I have a few little speckles of paint, in this case blue, on the forearm. But overall, like I said, the paints on this guy is pretty clean. It works in its favor that the majority of the figure is actually blue plastic, which also so happens to work in its favor because the majority of, of the costume is blue. So really, they only have to paint the side areas on the belt, on the torso, and on the sleeves of the arms. We have the really interesting designed boots on Spider-Man with the little red on the side and the silverish kind of the white color on the underside there. And you've got peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Nice detailing, really done. You get these little nuances, these little raised elevated pieces on his costume. And that carries over from the game itself where he has these raised sections. It's not simply just a smooth costume. And I'm glad to see that Diamond Select captured that as well when it came to this particular release. I also really like this, the additional darker color that seems to be a, a kind of a border for a lot of the webbing. You see it up here, gets a little messy here, granted, but you've got this kind of darker, it's like a brownish red, actually, that covers and borders around, like I said, that little areas of webbing. It's a nice, like I said, looking figure. There's not really much I would have actually changed to it at all. It's poseable as well. 
The thing about Spider-Man figures is always problematic. It's not even necessarily Diamond Select either. But the, because the head is sculpted the way that it is, um, it does really prevent articulation here on the neck. So while you can move Spider-Man's head down, while you can rock it back and forth, you really can't bring the head any higher than what I'm currently doing right here. That's as high up as it actually goes. The head rotates all the way around. The neck at one point did seem like it was too long, and yet the more I look at it, I feel like the neck is proportionate to the rest of his body. He has the upper torso ball joint, so you can rotate that all the way around. And then he's got a secondary ball joint, get a gander at this, that actually rotates all the way around as well. It's also clever the way that they've done this, where the belt, or the equivalent of the belt, because it's of course part of his costume, it's higher than his waist. In other words, when you drop the waist down, it actually is higher up, and it does a great job of kind of concealing that articulation point. Clever the way they've done that. The arms hinge out, not quite at a 90 degree angle, just a little less than that. And uh, also in addition to that, the arms rotate all the way around. Spider-Man's biceps, quite large biceps, swivel. He has a double hinge on the elbow, which can really be difficult to bend in both places. But he does have a hinge there, and he has a hinge up at the top there. Hands also rotate all the way around. Um, again, if you want to just pop them out for a replacement hand, maybe we'll just go with the web shooting hand for now. Why not? We'll go thumbsies in. That's the rule of thumb, as they say. And again, unpegging and replacing hands it couldn't be any bit easier. Whatever hand you decide to go with, the hands rotate all the way around. There's a nice hinge joint right there. You can move the hands in and out, just like that. Just like that. Sound like Bob Ross. Just like that. Then for the legs, the legs are on a straight out ball joint and with that adopts the idea that you can move the legs quite at a great distance, more than in some cases that we've gotten before. The legs go forward, the legs go slightly back. I mean, the butt sort of stops the leg moving further back from there. He has a three quarter swivel cut on the thigh. You can rotate that all the way around. He has a double hinge on the knee. And then when it comes to his feet, get a good look at this. His feet rotate all the way around on that ball joint. And because it's a hinge ball joint, you can also move the feet up and down just like that. And also you can rock the ankle back and forth. You can rock the Casbah with Spider-Man's ankle pivot. Overall, like I said, really a nice looking figure. Not something which I would have adopted immediately the idea of loving. I mean, more for me. somebody old school, I love the look of Spider-Man's original costume, like the Scarlet Spider costume, and most definitely like the Symbiote costume, that this was different. And different isn't always necessarily a bad thing. Different is good. In the case of the Spider-Man video game costume, as I said, it wasn't a costume I really liked initially, but the more and more instances I see it getting a release through various different statues and collectibles, the more I'm falling in love with this costume. And I think Diamond Select have done a really good job of releasing this guy in the larger 7-inch format. So this is the Advanced Suit Spider-Man costume, the main suit that he wears in the game. Hopefully, though, and I have to wonder if Diamond Select have planned the alternate skins that you can pick up also in the game, featuring some classic costumes that Spidey has worn in the past comics. To be fair, though, if this is a one and we're done sort of situation, to be fair, a lot of those costumes have already been released in Marvel Select figures in the past. So really, if you wanted to display all your Spideys as he appears in the game, you probably could pluck and pull older Marvel select figures and display them along with the advanced suit Spider-Man. This one is a nice release. Its accessories, unfortunately, are limited. He only comes with the Spidey phone. I know I want to throw Spidey in front of everything. And he comes with the Spidey drone, which, of course, both of them are currently in final looks in Spidey's hands. I said Spidey probably about three times already. The Spidey drone is a nice touch. I like the fact that they do include the Spider drone along with Spider-Man. Omitted here in Final Looks, he also did come included with that webbed dome, which you could make shift as a shield if you wanted to, or a little tiny doghouse for the spider drone. After all, he has to have a place to sleep as well. Some additional accessories would have certainly been well received from this humbled reviewer, but you get enough going, and of course the main thing, the draw of picking this piece up for yourself, is not necessarily just accessories. Accessories are the parsley to the steak. The steak itself is a nice looking Spider-Man, which translates extremely well from the folks over at Diamond Select. 
Did you manage to pick up the Spider-Man collector's action figure with accessories? The figure from the Gamerverse line. What do you think of him? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'd also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select who are nice enough to send this sample my way. If you guys are interested in wanting to find out more what's going on from those folks over at Diamond Select, might I also recommend that you guys check out and subscribe to their YouTube channel as it's a good sneak peek way of seeing what is early in the pipeline before it eventually hits store shelves. Um, as you also are in the market of following things along, if you are new to this channel and want to follow the exploits of this humbled reviewer, might I suggest you hit that bell notification, might I suggest you hit that subscribe button, and might I also suggest, it may sound painful, but keep your peepers peeled, members of the mob, to this channel as there's always new video content coming on a regular basis. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.